All right, so at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Ten of Pentacles. This is assurance that this life circle, this life cycle, this life circumstance is wrapping up. This is what we're heading towards. This is what we're striving towards. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really getting anything other than just pure bliss, happiness, feeling free. I'm not getting anything really specific other than just a feeling state because once we get into that feeling state, this can ultimately translate into anything. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Happy Monday, yes, I hope you have all had a excellent weekend. Um, I had a good one. Oh, happy Easter weekend, by the way. I hope you guys had a good Easter. It is, uh, my calendar says it's Easter Monday. I was not aware that's a thing. I mean, as far as I grew up and as far as I knew, it was like Sunday was Easter. Um, but hey, happy Easter Monday, yeah? I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your day. Keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading, yeah? So whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Holy moly. I totally just slipped back into my original morning coffee uh, intro. That's so cool. I, <laughs> I haven't said that in like, I, had, I haven't said it that way in a while. So <laughs> a little bit of nostalgia for you. Um, yeah. So keep in mind, this is a general reading and this is a timeless reading. And even if this reading doesn't necessarily resonate for you right now, um, maybe, you know, stick a pin in it, save it for later and you can watch it and maybe it'll resonate for you at that time. Yeah. Okay. So I don't really have um, anything. I don't have like story time or anything to start with. One thing I will say is that um, the energies are interesting. Um, dreams have been really interesting lately. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't been keeping up with keeping track of like the astrology or anything because I've just been, I, I've been in this mode lately where, you know, I've been really tired and not really wanting to do anything like the sun coming in. <laughs> um, and actually a lot of my other friends have been feeling the same way. A, a friend of mine that I've been talking to, we were hanging out over the weekend and we were just talking about it and she was like, yeah, I've been avoiding work for like the last two weeks. And I'm like, girl, same here. <laughs> like, I just, so I, I don't know exactly where, um, I don't, I, I, I don't know if we've switched officially into Aries season yet in terms of sidereal astrology. I do follow sidereal astrology. I don't, um, I don't follow tropical. So I'm not exactly sure when we've switched, but I know that my dreams have been pretty dark lately. And um, like that came through in the air sign readings for April. Um, there was this dream that I had. If you guys have watched that, then you know, but oh Lord. But there's this dream that I had in which people kind of, I was surrounded by a group of young people, I'll say adolescents, basically kids, maybe somewhere in their teens or something like that. I don't know, but they were young people and um, they all, it's like they were being drugged. I was around them. I was watching, I was just kind of watching them and they were all fine. And then all of a sudden everything would drop. It literally would go and, and everyone would kind of like sink in and turn gray and they'd get this really weird, crazy, like creepy smile on their face. Um, and there was even one point in that dream in which I noticed that the amount of sunlight was actually limited to, to, to those of us in this area. I wasn't really, I don't, I don't feel like I was a part of that group. I just felt like I was there observing. And then when I woke up that day, um, I did the air sign readings and it all kind of translated into that, into those readings. So maybe if that kind of if that imagery resonates with you and you haven't watched the air sign readings for um, for April of this year yet, you might want to check those out. Um, and it literally, like I did, I, I do the the sign, I do the the elements, you know, in one one element a day when I'm doing the monthlies, and it literally went from Gemini to Libra to Aquarius, and it was like a whole arc of a story. So you might want to check that out. But that was one dream that I had last week, and then last night I had another dream. Um, well, actually, no, the last two nights I've had some pretty dark dreams, like uh, subconscious fears coming up. Um, and this morning I kind of resolved to, 
not let it get me down, not be uh, bothered by it. I mean, to be honest, I guess, okay, I'll share. Um, in the dream a few nights ago, I, I dreamt I was losing my hair, which is scary. Um, and that's like a, a dream of like losing power or lack of self-confidence and and all that kind of stuff and like maybe even feeling out of control. It can represent some health issues, but mostly the most common interpretation of like hair loss in a dream is uh, a losing a sense of control, losing a sense of um, a power and also uh, self-confidence, having lack of self-confidence, right? And so then last night I had a dream where there were all these this is gonna sound so weird and I almost I'm almost embarrassed for saying it but like there were a bunch of men that were trying to tell me why I was too much for them and in the dream I was I was really concerned like I was sitting there trying to listen trying to understand but I did notice that when I woke up I didn't come away with anything tangible anything real anything for me to like li really sit down and be like okay all right I see what you're I see what you're saying there um, and so now that I'm thinking about it, that's translating into, and especially since like even when I woke up, I, a part of me was kind of like, you know what, if I'm too much for you, then I don't even know why we're, t why we're having this conversation. Like, why do you feel you need to explain yourself to me right now? Like, I'm too much for you. Why are you even talking to me? You know, that, and that's, in the dream, I was really trying not to approach it that way. Like, I remember, I wasn't conscious in the dream. Like, I wasn't aware like it wasn't a lucid dream i wasn't like aware that i was asleep but i was very much conscious enough in the dream to to like li to listen to what they were saying and um and try and you know try and listen trying to i'm sorry my phone is doing weird things but trying to listen and trying to be open to what they had to say but in the end they didn't really give me anything of value it wasn't even like they were making any valid points it really wasn't even like they were saying anything at all they were just arguing with me <laughs> and I was like okay I... so um but see now okay this is definitely a story time so I'm I'll make sure to to put a timestamp in that for those of you that would like to get to the reading now but to me this is translating into um an expression or a part of this like ego death that I've I was talking about a few weeks ago and, you know, I brought, I, I inf told the YouTube collective about it when I restarted morning coffee here, but there's been this extended period of fears coming up, of needing to trust in the universe, of needing to just, I want to say back down and honor what my soul is desiring. And my soul is desiring to rest right now. My soul is desiring to be in a state of just being and allowing things to happen and letting things come up and dealing with them as they do. And so, yeah. So what this, so for me right now, this is the translation or this is the, um, the, a period of, you know, these insecurities coming up and I literally just heard myself say, and washing them away, just letting them float away. I, my, I don't know if you guys are noticing this, but um, I have my phone plugged in while I'm recording and my port is doing something weird where it like stops for it stops the charging and then starts up again. It's, it's, I hope it's not affecting the video, but anyway, so that's where I am right now. Um, so I, I wonder, I wonder if we are still in, in sidereal astrology, I'll have to look it up. Please forgive me. I'm not an astrologer. I yet I'm working on it, but like I to be honest, I haven't been working on it because I've just been in this phase of just like I don't have the mental capacity for that right now. Um and actually that's a whole other topic that we can get into later about, you know, the whole astrology thing. Because even in this ego death that I've been experiencing lately, you know, a lot of the stuff, I don't know how much I explained it on in Morning Coffee here, but a lot of the things that I had been dealing with, um, a lot of the drive that I had, a lot of the push to do certain things or be a certain person or show up a certain way or develop certain talents, this, that, and the third, that drive has just depleted. It's left me. I don't have it right now. Um, and it's even gotten into a place where I'm questioning the validity of astrology and the validity of being an astrologer and what do I really need to be an astrologer for? And that has a lot to do with the fact that there are so many different systems that it's like, 
who's to say what's really real or not. Like, I'm literally having trouble getting behind studying something like that or really pushing myself to really learn just because of... Uh, literally, the question for me is, what's the point? What's the point? So, so this is all that part of that ego death that I'm going through right now. And it's, it's really interesting. It's very, very interesting. And I even remember there was a moment where I t actually, it was this morning while I was like, I woke up and I was doing like, you know, my morning meditation and just, you know, settling into my body and getting into the day and, and giving thanks and being grateful for, you know, waking up in the morning, have a roof over my head, having food in my fridge and all that kind of stuff. Right. And at one point, I remembered the days when, you know, I was back in Brooklyn and I was still with my now ex-husband and I was remembering my drive. Like I was always, I was always coming up with music or I was always, I had this DJ app that I was playing with all the time and I was, you know, I was spinning tracks together and this, that and the third and, and there was music in my head all the time and I wanted to get it out there and I was writing and recording and I was remembering that strong almost obsessive energy i mean when you're really in that that groove of it it does become obsessive to a certain extent right but that's just not where i am anymore and part of me is wondering why another part of me is very is understanding where i am personally but also understanding where i am in conjunction with where the, where the rest of the world is because there's so much in flux right now which is another reason why i decided it was best for me to bring morning coffee back to youtube right so and the thing about this this whole ego death that's happening, and I, I'm calling it that for myself. You guys can call it whatever you want, but if you're 11, 11, but if you guys see, if you guys are dealing with the same thing, then you can go ahead and call it that too. Um, but see, things like this, like I, I can't, I don't know if I, I said this, I think I said this in a Patreon reading yesterday, um, but I have been feeling very lost lately, and it's because of this ego death, or this big shift that I'm going through, right? And the one thing that has kept me on track has been the numbers because I'll sit here and I'll do readings for people and I know part of me it can at least settle into the fact that at least doing these readings right now is the rest is the best thing for me to do because of that number, 1111. That has been showing me consistently, okay, I'm in the right place right now. So good. So the other part of this ego death or this, this process that many of us are going through, I will say, because a lot of you, even on Patreon, have been saying that you were feeling the same thing. Many of you here on YouTube are saying you're feeling the same thing. But the biggest part, the biggest challenge, I will say, in this ego death period right now is the extended period of it, like the amount of time it's taking. Like you literally, I, I'm finding I literally have to just sit back and trust the universe, trust my higher self, and just go with the flow and, and, and take this as long as it's going to, let it take as long as it's going to take. And I will say, if this were me, if I were going through this extreme of a shift two, three years ago, I would be freaking the fuck out. But it, it's because of the foundation that I've built over the last three years in being a reader and, and trusting the universe and allowing this to, allowing the energetic exchange to work out in the best way possible for all of us. I've really been able to set into this place of really being able to trust and to just fall back and just... Just go with the flow, roll with the punches, do what it do what it do what it do, let it do what it do, you know what I mean? So if you're struggling with that, just understand that you're not alone, okay? This is This is not easy, and this is definitely uncharted territory here. I would definitely say that. Okay. Okay. Also, last one last thing I want to say. I so I've d I've figured out how to shoot videos at a better quality here on my phone. But that means that the files are bigger. And now that I'm working on this whole, like doing this intro thing, I know you guys are loving the intro. A lot of you are mentioning that. I'm loving it too. And I'm glad you're loving it. Big shout out to my friend, Kristen, who put that look, that, 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 uh, that intro together for me. Like round of applause, everybody for Kristen. Thank you so much, Kristen. I'm loving it. Um, but now, because I'm shooting at better quality, the files are longer, and it's going to take a little more time to edit and then upload, so Morning Coffee isn't going to be uploaded as early as my ego wants it to be, because <laughs> I would love to have it up and ready to go by 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know, boop, boop, but we're going with the flow here, kids, yeah? So just keep that in mind. That's the last thing I want to say before we get started here is that um, bigger files, 
more uh, more of a process because I'm editing, so it's going to be up a little later in the day than what we're originally used to. But anyway, okay, let's get into this now. Um, I'm using, for today, we're using the Tiro Mucha. And then that's our main deck. Our clarifying deck is going to be Los Carabeo. And then we're going to get Oracle Guidance, but we will cross that bridge when we get there, yeah? Excellent. Let's get into it and see what we have in the cards for today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representations of the energies in terms of the situations, situation ships, circumstances, and places in which we need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, y'all. Five shuffles here. One. I will say that as I was just praying and, and collecting the energy and putting it into the cards, it the card the, the there was like a, a a purple aura around the cards, which I was which I found really comforting. This is two. So. We've definitely got some higher wisdom and divine guidance in the cards for us today, yeah? This is three. I was going to say on our plates. On our plates. Got some divine guidance on our plates. Okay. Gobble that up. A. Hey. <laughs> this is three. Four. y'all so what's what do you want to talk about today what do you have for us today please spirit okie dokie at the bottom of the deck is the star um hi little birdie uh the star so there's healing here Okay, there's wish fulfillment. Uh, this is definitely um, mirroring what I was just talking about in terms of just following the universe, following through, and allowing things to happen, all right? Um, this is interesting. So the one thing that I want to talk about first is this Five of Swords that's come out here. But this Five of Swords came out and fell on a different area on the table uh, rather than in the pile of the three other cards that have come out here for you so, or for us. So what I feel like is, what I feel like this Five of Swords is representing here, this Five of Swords is an adjacent energy. So it's not necessarily you. Quite frankly, it feels like this is an energy that you are trying to come to get away from. Um, and so I guess this translates into what I was talking about in story time right before I got started here. This is that energy that we're leaving a go. Leaving a go. Leaving, leaving behind, okay? That fight energy, that extreme drive, that, that, that one-upmanship, that winning at all costs, success at all costs, the hustle, the grind, the, the excessive striving. It doesn't really, I mean, sure, it may, it may, It may bring, bring benefits in terms of profit. Like, let's look at this Five of Swords energy from a business point of view. Instead of businesses, well, I'm not going to speak for all, because it does feel like the mom and pop stores, the, the small, locally owned type businesses or whatnot, those are community oriented, oriented, sure. But then when you get into like the big corporations, sure, they can talk about their being, their, their community oriented, their people oriented, but are they really? And there's this extreme sense of drive and competition. Needing to be the best, needing to have the most sales, needing to make millions of dollars or hundreds of that, all that stuff, right? 
That's what we're talking about here. The one-upmanship, the I'm better than you, I'm gonna do better than you, I'm gonna be more successful than you, this, that, and the third. That's what this Five of Swords energy leaves, is, it, it feels like it is, and this is what it feels like we're leaving behind. On the other side of the table, we do have the Two of Pentacles. Sorry, sunlight's coming through the window. Two of Pentacles to Justice, and one card that's fallen face down, it is the Ace of Wands. Okay, now I feel like this Ace of Wands is an energy of um, new inspiration, having a new drive. So you remember, you remember when I was talking, if you missed story time, if like if you skipped story time, you might want to go back and watch it because now it seems like that's tying into the reading here. But remember when I was talking about how back in the day, you know, I was extremely inspired and I was constantly like mixing and writing and producing and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's what this Ace of Wands feels like. Not necessarily, you know, that specifically, obviously, this is going to be different for anybody, for everyone here, but that feeling of having a sense of direction or no, I just heard knowing where to go or knowing what it is you want to pursue, knowing what it is you want to study, knowing what it is you want to develop, knowing what it is you want to create, or at least just having that passionate drive to do something. That's what's coming. But this card did fall face down, so it does feel like, to me, this is still kind of hidden in the shadows. Because what's important right now is finding balance. Two of Pentacles and Justice. So not only just physical balance in your life, but uh, justification or justi justice. And it does feel like... I, uh, um, I, heard, I heard very faintly something to the uh, along the lines of they hurt me so it feels like the justice that you're you're working on dealing with right now or developing in your life the justice and the balance has to do with past pain has to do with ways that maybe this has to do with your inner child ways that you were shunned or um, disregarded disrespected um, not listen to feelings of being unheard is what I just heard as well. That's what we're dealing with right now. That's what we're healing from right now. The star is at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the star is, in fact, the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles and the Two of Cups. Also, to the Queen of Wands and then Judgment underneath the Queen of Wands and the Sun. But the Queen of Wands feels like getting back into that energy that would allow you to focus on this or to move forward with this Ace of Wands energy once that does arise within you. But in order to do that, we need to work on completing this process, healing from the awful, terrible stuff that happened, Ten of Swords, the Star to the Ten of Swords to the Ten of Pentacles, wrapping up that life cycle, closing out that life circumstance, moving on to the next chapter in your life, which involves healing and bringing this balance and harmony and union of lovers of, of the Two of Cups, the, the masculine and feminine within you. This, this Two of Cups feels like that healing energy of getting back to a sense of yourself, getting back to loving yourself, getting back to appreciating yourself. In some cases, getting there for the first time at all. And so for me, this is translating into all of the ways that I thought I had to show up in the world, all the ways that I thought that I needed to express my talents and, and develop my talents. My drive for doing that was not because I was here in this Two of Cups energy, not because I really truly loved myself or, I, or, or anything. It was because I wanted validation. Because I felt like if I filled a certain role or if I showed up in a certain way, if I pursued a certain career or if I did a certain thing, then I would finally get approval from people. But really the only person you need approval from is yourself. And that's what this is. The Queen of Wands to Judgment and the Sun. You finding the love and care and compassion and and strength and drive and um, self-confidence in yourself, rising towards this. And then everything will get much, much better with the sun, okay? I'm gonna pull, do, I'm gonna pull one more time. Um, I don't really wanna talk, well, maybe we'll talk about this energy when we get into the clarification, but I wanna pull one more time here for Justice, the Two of Pentacles, and the Ace of Wands, yes? So what else can you say for us in terms of this energy? Please, Spirit, Justice, Two of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. Sorry, 
Oh my goodness. They gave us one card and one card only besides what's at the bottom of the deck. Well, what's at the bottom of the deck kind of... Whoa. All right. So at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Ten of Pentacles. So to me, this is assurance that this life circle, this life cycle, this life circumstance is wrapping up. The only other card that you've, that you've gotten here is a real sense of beautiful encouragement. It's the Ten of Cups. This is what we're heading towards. This is what we're striving towards. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really getting anything, not getting much on that Ten of Cups other than just pure bliss, happiness, feeling free, feeling, uh, not feeling bogged down by the burdens any longer. Like this Ten of Cups, I'm not getting anything really specific other than just a feeling state because once we get into that feeling state of the Ten of Cups, of just being happy and content in who we are and what we are at the moment, at any given moment, and in trusting in the universe to provide us with everything that we need, this can ultimately translate into anything. It's going to be different for everybody, right? So I'm not getting anything specific on that Ten of Cups other than just pure bliss and happiness. And that is what we're working on here bringing that balance into our lives so that we can experience this Ten of Cups, this pure bliss and happiness. And then ultimately, 555 five, five on the counter, feel inspired to move in a, a new direction, maybe an, a, an old direction, a, the, the rekindling of an old flame in terms of created creativity or what you want to pursue or whatnot, whatever. Okay. But this should be the focus here. Happiness. Bliss contentment, a sense of community, right? This really should be the focus. And maybe that is what this process right now is getting us into alignment with. Maybe that's what this Ace of Wands is going to end up translating into, a sense of pursuit of happiness and community and love instead of this. Competition, destruction, deceit, tearing each other down, getting over on someone just so you can win. But even though you may gain some sort of recognition or you gain some sort of money or whatnot, like you gain the profits you were looking for, you gain the whatever, you still did it. If you're doing it from this place, you're doing it on the backs of other people. And that's never fun. That's never cute. And even if you are victorious here, that doesn't normally feel very good, does it? No. No, that's what we gotta stop doing. That's what we're working on, not doing any longer. Okay. Alrighty, kids. So let's get clarifying, yeah? Five shuffles here. One. Two. And yeah, we're going to start with that five of swords energy. Let's talk a little bit about that. This is three. five. All right. So, yeah. All right. Let's talk about this five of swords here. Uh, at the bottom of the deck so far, you do have the nine of swords. So already what I'm feeling like is this five of swords energy, if it's being expressed or if other people in your life are expressing it, it most, li most likely has to do with fear. And this makes perfect sense especially in today's day and age in which, you know, shit is just shit, right? Um, so, okay, there's a sense of panic here. There's a sense of overly controlling, needing to feel like, or feeling like you need to have control and doing anything that you can possibly to gain some sort of control in your life. That's not going to help you. But also, what I'm getting is that the Nine of Swords here is also representing the fear or the anxiety or the, maybe the past, the memories that, that are bubbling up in terms of how this energy may have been expressed in your life, whether it was through you or from others, whatever. I will say that the good thing about this is that this Nine of Swords, and, oh wow, you guys. Okay, look, I haven't even, I haven't even like pulled officially yet. I'm just going at the bottom of the deck from the, from the shuffle, right? From the beginning shuffle to just, you know, whatever. <laughs> so what I was going to say is this Nine of Swords actually kind of feels like the impetus 
that's helping to push you out of this energy, that's helping to effectively close out this energy. The Nine of Swords to the world, to the Five of Swords underneath that, to the High Priestess. It feels like there's a higher understanding or a higher wisdom that's coming online for you right now that's helping to push you to end this energy. But it's like like the Nine of Swords is kind of feeling like that cringeworthy energy, like those moments, those, those memories that come up where you're like, oh, God, I did that. Oh, oh, you, you know what I mean? Like those real cringeworthy moments. But it's helping to change the situation for you. It's helping to catalyze you moving out of that energy, out of that Five of Swords energy, yeah? Let's get a little bit more. Let's see what else we can get for this Five of Swords here. Just saying that's enough. Ah, okay. So now we have the King of Wands showing up. Um, so the King of Wands energy is giving me a feeling of, <sighs> people having to put themselves in situations in which they feel that they only can, they, they really only concern is for themselves. And yes, the King of Wands energy can be extremely, extremely selfish. And that's, that is what this kind of feels like here, but at the same time, there's a reason for it. There's a reason behind it. It's not like it's just, well, you know what? I'm just going to be this selfish prick just because I want to. No, no. There's an underlying reason as to why you may find yourself here in this energy of like extreme self-centered energy. It's a defense mechanism. King of Wands, Seven of Wands, King of Swords. But now it's time to look at that and see it for what it truly is. King of Swords. What is it? It's nothing but a big old ego battle. Five of Wands. No one has to be right. The, I, the, I, and I say that because often the Five of Wands can represent right fighting in, in for me. So meaning, you know, you're fighting to be right when that's really not even really necessary. I personally don't believe that there is such a thing as right or wrong. I understand that there are opinions. I understand that there are, morally there are things that you can look at and say, okay, no, that's right or that's wrong. But ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, I don't believe there's such a thing as right or wrong because ultimately, we are all just p bits and pieces of source, the universe, God, source, creator, whatever you want to call it. We are bits and pieces of that oneness that we all come from that has projected itself out into existence in order to experience itself. It, it's no other reason to experience itself and to learn from about itself and to learn from itself and to expand and to grow and to, to learn new things and try new things. And so it, when you really think about it, and then when you couple it with you, you couple that with the fact that we're all eternal anyway, like, yeah, these, these meat suits are going to expire someday, but ultimately the soul that is encapsulated in this body or the, 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 the soul that animates the life around us, that's eternal. So when you wrap all that together, I personally feel like there really is no such thing as right or wrong. So that's why this energy <clears throat> leads to this energy, leads to this energy. Five of Wands leads to people puffing themselves up and becoming very defensive, seven of wands, and just becoming very self-centered because they feel like that's all they really have. They only have themselves. And you know what? That's right. In some cases, they really people find that we really only have our own selves, but that's where this sense of community is really trying to break through, okay? But then it leads to this five of swords energy. People one-upping each other. People trying to do better or trying to be better just just or or you know trying to win and the real winning comes through when we work together as a community as one big family i guess you could call it so the easiest way to put out this fire 
yeah, is through love and compassion. Ace of Cups. Douse that fire and give somebody some water because I'm pretty sure they're thirsty, right? Okay. I feel like that was pretty anticlimactic, but that's the moral of the story right there. Ace of Cups. Unconditional love for the self, unconditional love for all others. There is more than enough to go around. There is an infinite supply of this love here. So you don't have to worry about whether or not your cup is going to get full because someone else is being filled up right now. There is always going to be enough. More than enough. There is an infinite abundance of this. You just have to let it in and allow it to flow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move to Oracle Guidance right now, but I actually want to move to, I want to use the um, Lemuria deck because there is a card, and I, I'm, not, and I'm not saying that this card is actually going to come out, but there is a card in that deck that talks about water and just allows it to flow. And there is an image, or the image on that card is of a, a feminine figure allowing water to just pour down on her and it's pouring through her hands and she has her hands open like this and it's just pouring through. But the moral of that or the, the message in that is there's no need for her to hold on to it because it's always going to flow. She just let it flow through you, over you, get what you need from it and then let it continue on to the next, right? I have to find that deck though, hold on. <laughs> Wait a second, what did I do with the Beyond Lemuria deck? I have to organize my cards, you guys. They're all a mess. But I don't see. Oh no. All right. Well, I may not be able to use that deck today. So let's use something else, yes? <laughs> let's just go with the Crystal Mandala. That's a it's an easy go-to, right? Here we go. Let's give this five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right, y'all. Sorry, closing Oracle guidance. Here we go. Closing Oracle guidance for today's reading. There it is right there. All right, we have card number 21, Ascended Master Lady Nada and Rotocrosite, Sensitivity. Okay, here we go. We bring you the blessing of sensitivity. Being sensitive in this world can be tough sometimes, Yet your sensitivity is essential if you are to consciously feel and work with subtle energy. Receiving and sending telepathic transmissions, feeling and releasing energetic cords, and, uh, tingling with exquisite blessings of divine love, sensing the whispers of divine grace, and seeing the luminous, sparkling particles of life force dancing wildly and the beautifully shimmering aur auric fields in dazzling and colorful display. To be given the gift of sensitivity to perceive the energetic world is like being invited to the most special and extraordinary exhibit of sacred art. You may have struggled with your sensitivity, found it difficult to bear during times of emotional suffering, yet you have a great gift and it will bring you so much joy. If you are learning to develop your sensitivity, 
We will help you so you too can feel uplifted as you witness the energetic beauty of creation. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, all right, I'll leave it there. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>